bang, 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 bird gang, bang, bang, R-O, comma, Joe with the free square on prize picks right now, 0.5 passing yards. Prize picks want you to get on the platform. They want you to get on the app. They want you to enjoy losing money with us. So right now they have Burrow, 0.5 passing yards for the conference championship football round against the Chiefs. I think he has it in him. We talk about locks a lot, and this one is we don't that usually I, know, I firmly but this believe one, it. Yeah, I feel we like even you time. can do this. Uh, so get on to Prize Picks. Go download the app. First link in the description. If you're new there, you're going to use the promo code BDGE. That'll get you a 100% deposit match. Whatever you throw down, you'll get double. And since Burrow's a free square, you're going to double it. So realistically, we're giving you like 10x exp- exponentializing whatever you're putting down first. Let's talk conference championship games. And make sure you subscribe because we will be going uh, for the rest of the games as well. Super Bowl, etc. The XFL, 49ers. USFL. Nope. 49ers <laughs> Damn. at Philadelphia. If you're a real 49er fan, you travel to Philly on the East Coast this game. If you care at all about your team. You're probably there already. Right if you're now. coming with me. If you like Brock Purdy whatsoever, you'd be I, there. I was planning on going. I thought about it for a long time. And then I was like, you know what? I think I'd rather be in a warm bar or just not outside. Said. I'd rather save my money. I don't hate that take. It's a terrible take. But hopefully you've got some better takes to back up why you think the Niners are going to pull away in this game, if they are. I want to point out one thing, some possible fun outcomes after this weekend. you got the Chiefs versus the Eagles Super Bowl could happen. That would be a nice Andy Reid versus old team. That could be fun. That would not be fun. Or this one might be fun for you. You get the Chiefs versus the 49ers. We get a Super Bowl 54 rematch. Sounds like a motherfucking party. <laughs> All right. I well, like that one. We'll find out if we think any of these matchups are possible. No overall weather concerns for either of the games. These are both being played on Sunday. We've got 49ers at Eagles, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Bengals at Chiefs, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Kind of wish they split it up one Saturday, one Sunday, but they went greedy and took the Lord's Day. No weather concerns. The only real injury report concerns coming into this week. C-Mac dealt with a little calf thing. Uh, Elijah Mitchell also did not practice earlier in the week, but both are expected to play. I don't know how much you want to read into the whole uh, C-Mac Saga, it feels like another narrative just because everyone's so zoned in on one or two games that they're probably going to run with it in the same way yeah. that like the B- Bengals O-line thing became a thing. There you go. I was just going to say, it feels like last week with Joe Bang- uh, Joe Burrow's People just hang on line. to anything. Yeah, yeah, we need something to report. We need something to talk about. CMC is it this week. Yeah, so the 49ers are two and a half point dogs in Philadelphia. Over under is 46 and a half. Fun fact, Brock Purdy. Will be the fifth rookie quarterback to start a conference championship game. The previous four went. I don't know. Are you looking uh, at the show Mark sheet? Sanchez, Joe Flacco, the Big previous ben. four went. <laughs> is that not what it is? The previous four had a record of oh zero and three. I oh and four, four with sp- passing touchdown with whatever. four passing touchdowns and nine interceptions. Basically Brock Purdy fits right in. They haven't been doing well in the history, so uh, maybe we should be a little bit nervous about Brock Purdy going into this game. You know, I was nervous when the week first started. Right after we beat the Cowboys, I didn't think we looked 100% polished. Obviously, Eagles demolished the Giants, and I was like, you know what? This was a good season. We accomplished a lot. Brock Purdy, you know, made me feel good on the inside, and maybe this is where the season comes to an end. But as the week has gone along, I have completely flipped. I don't care if this is homerism, all right? I truly believe it. I believe that we're going to beat the shit out of the Cowboys, and I believe that we're coming away with a win against the Eagles in Philly. My score prediction, 27-23. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Take the Niners. Take the over. I love them this way. Is it insane? Is it insane? I don't believe that you believe it. I'm in on it now. I'm here. I'm I'm ready to fucking fight for it. I'll tell you one thing. Kyle Shanahan... Third most profitable coach in playoff history over the last 20 years. Well, I don't know if I should have said history. Over the, most profitable coach in the playoffs over the last 20 years, 7-1 and one against the spread. Seven, they're, they're dogs here. He wins. He covers. He becomes number two on that list. And your prediction comes true. Yeah, I don't really care about that list. I don't know. When I look at both of these teams, I think they're maybe the two best teams in the NFL, or at least the two most polished teams. Nah, maybe since he's in there as well. But I think overall rosters. They're just so strong everywhere. There's very few weak points, but I also feel like Philly's just a little stronger at most of those spots. Like their D-line, O-line combination is crazy. And then I just think Hurts is 
way more polished than Purdy is at this point. Yeah. He can make plays when he needs. Not that Purdy can, I guess, but I don't know. I, I just think Philly's a slightly better version of what the Niners are. Yeah, I, I think when you look at them just, you know, face value in a vacuum, as the people say, I would agree with that. When the Niners line up against the Eagles, shit's going to be different. All right? Niners. Where, where do we want to start? We want to start on the Niners offense, the Niners defense. Just make a good point. That's All right. Looking for. Here, here, here's how we're going to go. When the Niners have the ball, the question is, can they run it? Because that's going to set up the entirety of their offense. And I think they can. We've seen the Eagles struggle a little bit against the run. Have we? Yeah. Eagles are like 24th in DVOA against running backs. Like they, they are a little susceptible to the run game. And I believe Shanahan can run the ball on anybody. All right. I believe Shanahan can put a running back on the moon. That's a good line. You should have, you should have prefaced with that. Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> the main reason why I think the, the 49ers are going to be able to run the ball is kind of similar to last week where Niners run a lot of 21 personnel and similar to the Cowboys because they're in the same division. Eagles, Cowboys have similar schedules this, this year. They haven't seen a whole lot of 21 personnel. They also, in the small sample that they have, haven't been super successful. So when the Niners line up in 21 personnel, what's going to happen is it's going to make the Eagles uncomfortable, similar to the Cowboys, where they got to bring in an extra linebacker, which they don't really have on their depth chart. They do have they do have linebackers on their depth chart. It's just not their, their best strength. They're not playing in their defensive strength. Niners are going to be able to line up and run the damn ball. I don't care about Jordan Davis. I don't care about whoever you got else on your defensive line. Niners are great at avoiding single personnel. It's what we do uh, against the Rams all the time. We take out Aaron Donald. We either pitch it to the outside, we double-team him with a fullback, Run it up the middle. Niners' ability to run the ball is going to set up their play action. Purdy's been great in the shotgun. I think it's going to be a lot of small passes around the line of scrimmage. And we're just going to dice up this defense. We're going to dice them up. Nice and dice. Interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to say about that. I got a couple things uh, on the sheet here, though, that I, um, I, was, I was talking about coaching before. I think Kyle Shanahan is the better coach here. And when you get to these games, I think, should be a close game. Coaching will matter. I know some people don't necessarily agree with that. But I think uh, when it gets down to it, coaching will matter. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, 49ers. 2017 here. I love the under because of this reason right here. In the last 20 years, when two teams were averaging at least 130 rushing yards per game, face off in the playoffs, as both these teams are both averaging a ton of rushing yards, has only happened six times. Keep in mind, in the divisional round games, the under is 6-0. and oh going under by a total of 15.5 points per game. So whenever you have two teams that run the ball a lot and run the ball well, the under seems to be just chef's kiss. I feel like kiss. the Eagles don't actually run the ball that much, though. They do. They, Jalen Hurts runs the ball a lot. They run the ball more than probably almost anybody. I mean, they throw it 69% of the time in the first half. <sighs> they usually run it because they're up in the second half. Well, we'll find out what's th- going to happen I think here. the one thing that might, that might be working in the Niners' favor um, – I think the Niners have had, like, a much more difficult schedule up to this point. I think they've been challenged a little bit more. So I think, like, in a, when they face adversity, there might be – I could see the Niners coming in at, like, hero time and, and coming out of this game because they've been through more battles than the Eagles. That's what I'll say. But I don't, I don't know if I buy into their they're not a good run defense narrative. I do think that the Niners have a stronger run game than Philly on the other side, but I think Philly's yeah. passing game is much better than Niners the Niners. Niners defense, uh, run D is number one, so – yeah. No, you're talking about the Eagles' run D. Yes. You said the Eagles' run D wasn't very good. No, no. No, you're you not did. buying You're not Correct. buying into that. Correct. Yes. I think the story of the game, I mean, Christian McCaffrey's health is obviously going to be a big concern. Jalen Hurts, I think a lot of Jalen Hurts to Devonta Smith and A.J. Brown is going to be obviously what propels them. I'm not expecting a big game out of Miles Sanders. The Niners' rushing game is incredibly difficult to run against. So the unders on everything that has to do with Miles Sanders is probably the right play. But I think Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown are a little bit too – a little bit too much for the outside corners to to be able to lock down in this one. So if Jalen Hurts can make big plays, I think that that would be the key to I, I think overall it might be a low scoring game. I think it's gonna be like a very defensive focus game. So I actually under. No, I actually I actually think this is gonna be an over game because you got Jalen Hurts who obviously has the mobility and can extend plays with his legs. You have the Niners defense who plays very aggressive in terms of their secondary. They kind of they they run a four three defense, so they have their four guys on the line of scrimmage. They go attack the quarterback, but their safeties come down. They're banging. They play a lot of press, which is why we see the uh, opposing teams kind of make these big plays against the Niners defense, right? Like C.D. Lamb had some big plays. D.K. Metcalf had some big plays. So bank on it. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like total yardage led up through the air, the Niners don't rank well, and that's because a lot of it just comes in these like big chunk plays. 
So I think there are going to be times where the Eagles are able to kind of line up, shoot it downfield, make a make a big play. I mean, Jalen Hurts is that's, good. That's with what this team is. You know, it's right. like a lot of big chunk plays from fucking AJ Brown and Devonta Smith. And I, I think they will be successful with that sometimes. But it, it's also it's just high variance offense. You know what I mean? Like if that's what you're relying on, going deep a lot, you're not always going to be successful. It's you know it's a lower percentage success in yeah. terms of offense. But I, I think I think like you, I think they will get. They, they will get their shots down the field, which is why I kind of think this is going to be a higher scoring game. I know these are great never taken defenses. Under. I don't think you've taken a playoff under yet. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I have. I got clips of it. I've taken unders. I took two last week, so. But, yeah, I think uh, Shanahan being able to run the ball, Eagles being able to take some shots down the field, I think it's all going to work. And Eagles Eagles really do pass the ball a lot when they're running offense stalls. And they, they're they actually, like, fifth highest in pass rate in games where they're facing – defenses with a top 10 DVOA run defense. Yeah, I just like uh, Devonta Smith, AJ Brown are obviously a part of it, but it, it it's like you're saying if they depend on it, that's a little bit volatile, but they don't necessarily depend on it. Like they could do that, but they could also throw it to Goddard. Jalen Hurts takes off uh, like a tremendous level. I just think their offense, there's a lot of, they're not very dissimilar from the, the Niners. Like they'll beat you in a million different ways that it's really hard to plan for. I just yeah. think Hurts is a little bit better. I, I and Yeah, I, I think the Eagles offense is versatile, but like, how the, how the Niners' defense is playing this year is a lot of... They don't play a lot of too high safety, so they're taking out, like, the middle of the field. They're taking out a lot of short yardage, like, flats, um, which is kind of why I don't like Goddard in this game. Sure. Um, also, this is, like, the best linebacker core in the NFL. And I, I could see the Niners play more too high safety, knowing that, like, this Eagles offense is very explosive and you probably want to limit those big plays. But that would be something slightly different than they been doing like all season I feel like you kind of have to like if I think if they go into the approach where they're like we're good enough to just limit the run because of how talented we are and then we limit big plays like that doesn't leave a ton of extra room for the Eagles to move down the field and also Niners are still the best run defense even with a lighter box so even when they are playing too high safety they do a really good job limiting the run obviously not as much as when you you, when you bring like Jimmy Ward or Hufanga into the box right like that's that's really when you destroy run games. But, you know, on the flip side, Eagles, that's that's one thing that the Eagles can't do. It, they like, they kind of uh, are similar where they like having their four guys just rush the passer and they and they play like sound coverage. But when the Niners line up in that 21 personnel, they, ju- they just don't have that secondary player, that extra safety or whoever to come in the box and help stop the run. So... It's gonna it's gonna be a fun game. That that's it's two really good fucking teams. Yeah, that that's really where the Eagles have struggled in in defending the run. Is, you're is getting basically in, you're when, getting in your fucking X and O bag over here. I dude, I am dude. This Niner game has been <laughs> playoff nothing Tony's on my a, mind. Playoff Tony's a different Tony. Yeah, he's not fucking around anymore. And I see animal uh, score animal is a different score now that the now that we're done here. What do you mean? Weren't you on the Eagles before or no? Uh, before the show, yes. Correct. I, yeah. I, I switched um, during. Well, right before we recorded, we hit record, I switched, and I did say it earlier, I'm 2017 Niners. 2017 Niners, I'm taking the Eagles 23-20, to 20, Tony 27-23. Let's talk about some individual players. Uh, I also want to introduce you guys, if you're not familiar with the Mojo app, uh, anyone can go download it right now. Only those in New Jersey can play at the moment and deposit money onto there. They are the sports stock market, but they have introduced a brand new game play on their app which is actual in-game type play it's called liquid prop so basically they put a player prop right christian mccaffrey at total yards of 102 and based on that it moves the price relative to uh how he's doing in the game so you're winning money or losing money based on how close the final uh yardage count is basically to that final number at 102 for Christian McCaffrey. I actually like the under there, so I would be shorting that 102 price on total yards for Christian McCaffrey. I don't want to buy too much into the narrative, but I do think it's they're just a tough run defense to to get going against. They're a tough defense overall to like really move the ball downfield on. And I think uh, I think we'll see a lot of Debo in the backfield. I think Elijah Mitchell will get his handful of carries. Is that? Damn, it felt like it came that, from here. Yeah, that was so loud that I yeah. thought it was a fucking one of those. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Um, yeah, so I'm going to take Christian McCaffrey. I'm going to short the 102, uh, expecting him to probably land somewhere in like the 75 to 85 range. It minimizes risk on these types of bets, so you're not going 100% in. Like, I'm putting $100 on 102 yards. You're going to lose $100. It's more so wherever it ends up. That's how much money you walk away from it with. Um, so if you're new to this, it's a really, really cool game that kind of keeps you plugged in throughout the game, and you can cash out at any time, so it's completely liquid. And if you're new to Mojo, you can download the app with promo code BDGE, 
all caps, they will give you a $100 deposit on a $25 deposit. So I like, I like C-Mac at 102. I think he's going to finish under that. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's my, sig- <laughs> don't, don't you know that's my signature move, just taking the under on C-Mac. I know, but like th- this just hasn't been successful in the past. We always go through this. Oh, man, CMC's number so high. And what does he I do? Did it with, I did it with, uh, with Saquon. Whenever the last game they played was, Man, we're not we're not talking about the Giants booty team. We're talking about the 49ers. We're talking about what did have C-Mac last? What did C-Mac have last game? Fucking fifty five yards. Yeah, la- I mean last game C-Mac got stuffed. Yeah, but about to get. I don't know. Eagles let up a lot of that underneath stuff. A lot of those short passes. Exactly. Rock- He's gonna have to have forty five catches to get ninety yards in this yeah. game. I like it. Thank you. But prize picks, man. Back to that free square. So we got this, the free square at point five passing yards. Um, as I mentioned, I like Debo. I think he's he's gotten a lot of carries since he's got back into the backfield. I think he keeps being underrated in terms of the usage he's going to get. They have him at 18 and a half rushing yards, which I feel like is, uh, I mean, it's relatively high number for a wide receiver, but he's basically getting five to six carries a game, and he's not a guy who averages like two to three yards a carry. He has like usually one 11, 12, 13 yard run, and if you're giving him three carries on top of that, he's probably going to hit that with ease. So um, I will keep taking a Debo one at 18 and a half yards just based on the volume that he gets. Yeah, we don't believe in C-Mac this week. So, you know, we, 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 we go ahead and we we believe in Debo. I like that. Before you, I know you're going to probably have a lot <laughs> to say, so I'm just going to get mine out of the way. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Miles Sanders trend here. Miles Sanders less than five and a half receiving yards. It was six and a half initially, but they knew I was going to be on it. You're so still they, taking it? They lowered it. I'm still taking it. Look. So low. He's... Well, you know why? He's averaged uh, minus 1.4 uh, receiving yards for the last five games. He it's went 0, 0, 0, 6, and then negative 13. So mm-hmm. he just doesn't catch the ball. They don't throw him the ball. He doesn't get targeted the that's ball. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's why the line is so low. He, he could literally get one catch and, and obviously crush this line, but he doesn't get any receptions. Kenneth Gainwell kind of comes in and takes any receiving work. Boston Scott even rotates in when they play the Giants. So, um Miles Sanders, give me the less than five and a half receiving. He had a five game span in the middle of the season too, where he had one target, one catch, one yard, zeros across the board, zeros across the board, zeros across the board, one target, one catch, one yard. Like when five he goes off, games. it's like seventeen yards. Yeah. yeah, when he goes off, he goes <laughs> off. It's uh, it's yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough matchup too for receiving backs, and uh, that's just not even Miles Sanders' role. Yeah, tell so. us about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for my prize pick square, I'm going to go uh, with A.J. Brown to have more than five receptions. That's what I'm settling on. I've been bouncing back and forth between everything. But I think the I think the 49ers defense is going to keep Philly in more of a past focus mentality. Uh, like I've said before, the, the Eagles are a pass-happy team when they can't find any success running the ball. Uh, games where Eagles' run game has stalled, meaning that running backs were hit at or behind the line of scrimmage of at least half their carries. A.J. Brown has seen his receptions go from 4.6 to 6.3. Also, when that run game is stalling, A.J. Brown's seeing upwards of nine targets. Devontae Smith's numbers pretty much stay the same, regardless of how their um, run game's doing. So, I, I think He's we see... He's just awesome all the time. Yeah, he, he is a baller. So, A.J. Brown's seen almost two more receptions uh, against these good run defenses. Plus, he had down week last week. So, in, you know, like, you know how we like to say in the biz, he's... Do. Mm, big do. What happened last week, by the way? Was he – did he get hurt on that one play? There was the play where there were people already, like, trying to compare him to T.O. because he was, like, on the sideline bitching. I thought <laughs> he just, like, twisted his ankle or some shit. I, I, th- I think he's fine. Yeah, people were saying it's because he's not getting targets, but I'm pretty sure – they got one by, like, 30, so fucking – Yeah. And he had, like, 100 yards and five trades. Well, that's what people that. were saying. They were, like, trying to compare him to T.O. Like, oh, look at him, like, complaining up 30 that like, he's not getting the ball. The only comparison should be, is that fucking good? It's the comparison between him and T.O. Nobody will ever be as good as T.O., yeah. but – AJ Brown will be better. Yeah, I think the I think the Eagles run game basically pivots to getting AJ Brown some like more screen plays, some more stuff uh, around the line of scrimmage. So I like him to get more than five receptions. There you have it. That's game number one. Let's move into game number two: the Chiefs versus the Bengals in what some people are calling Burrowhead Stadium, but it is in Kansas City. Oh shit! I didn't hear that one yet. No, it's a good one. It's pretty no. fucking swaggy. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah, I mean. As a Broncos fan, I love anything that disrespects the Chiefs. So, <laughs> so the Bengals are minus one and a half points on the road. Maybe they're factoring in the fact that it's now a home game for them. 47 and a half point over under 20 degree weather. That's very cold. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Bengals could actually be uh, dogs now. This line has been just like 
swinging back and forth, two points on either side. I checked it's, before. It's still it's one and a half for the Chiefs. I think the over-under yeah. keeps fucking moving up and down, too. It's getting yeah. kind of crazy with this. Um, Bengals will be without Alex Kappa, Jonah Williams, uh, Lyle Collins. Yeah, he's still out. Still yeah. out. Still dead. Um, so, I mean, same narrative as last week. If you believe that the O-line is going to be a huge problem, then whatever problem it presented last week, it'll present the same non-problem this week. Yeah. This is, uh, I think, a lot of the – well, let's start off with this way. Like, if Mahomes is – Fully healthy, right? So he had a high ankle sprain last week. He's been practicing in full, whatever that means at this point. Maybe it's a lower severity ankle sprain, and they just called it a high ankle sprain. Maybe he's just going to be playing through a high ankle sprain straight up. Uh, if Mahomes was fully healthy, how much does that actually change the outlook of this game for you? You still have Bengals winning? I'm on the Chiefs now. It's one of those things where it's like if Mahomes was fully healthy, the Chiefs should be favorited, but I still kind of like the Bengals to win. But now that he's banged up, it's it's just like it's either a Bengals bet or nothing. You say that the Chiefs should be favored, is that just because they're the home team? Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, yeah, they also have. That's what I'm saying. Like, t- like, you don't believe like they're that much better of a team, just more because of the, the home team there. So they're the home the team, and Patrick Mahomes is the MVP, and you have Andy Reid, and yeah. Well, Burrow, they've played three times. Burrow is three and zero straight up against Patrick Mahomes, which is why people are calling it Burrowhead Stadium uh, because. Just feels like they have their number. You know, I don't know. There are not many teams in the NFL that can just go head to head with the Chiefs and continue to beat. It feels them. like the Bengals' defense like just knows how to contain Mahomes and, yeah. and contain that offense a little They're bit, legit. which is interesting. Yeah. This might come. I feel like this could be the, the the part of the season where it's like those lack of weapons outside of Travis Kelsey and not having real receivers like kind of comes to a head. Yeah, yeah you definitely. know what I mean. Um, so it's like Kelsey had like 17 targets or some shit last week. This is one of those times where, as a defense, and I mean, we talked about it last week, and I don't think it, it really worked well, but, like, what else do you really have to zone in on? Mahomes is not yeah. going to be as mobile as he normally would be. Kelsey's going to be his safety blanket, obviously. I feel like them two have that connection where it's an intangible, but you know anytime he's in uh, he's in trouble, anytime he's feeling that ankle, he's feeling pressure, he's going towards Kelsey. He's not going to sling it up to MVS and shit. I love McKinnon this week. I think McKinnon's going to be a huge just getting a ton of dump-offs because he got no catches last week. And especially if Mahomes is going to be hobbled, which I don't even think he's going to be. I think he's going to come up there and be look fine. I also think that narrative is going to be way overblown. I think too. he's going to come yeah. out and just look completely normal. He's going to have some tape on his ankle and he'll play just just as he always does. I almost think it could be a thing where, like, as the game progresses, it gets worse. Same. Like he'll he'll come out fine, but then like one third kind quarter of there'll be one sprint, right? right. Yep. Shot a Toradol in there, you're mm-hmm. fucking good to go. Yeah, those drugs are strong. That's yeah, they true. are. Um, okay, so this, yeah, I mean, this one should be, in a, you, you wish we got to see them kind of play at full strength. Um, yeah, I, I want the Bengals. That's fair. Um, I, I hope Mahomes has to play on one leg. Hope, I mean, <laughs> still a top five quarterback, even on one fucking leg. Yeah, no, what's actually fuck. crazy is his, his um, so when he suffered that injury, the rest of the game, Patrick Mahomes' um, EPA per play was second highest in the NFL. <laughs> Only... To a healthy Patrick Mahomes <laughs> EPA per play. So it was just like, it really didn't matter. It's Patrick Mahomes versus himself. Basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, this is also a rematch, I should say, of, of the AFC Championship game last year in which the Bengals uh, beat the Chiefs. So you don't typically see, you know, it takes one wrong thing to happen for a team not to get back to where they were last year. So it's kind of cool that we get a, a rematch of it. So Bengals beat them. So maybe Chiefs got a chip on their shoulder. But I feel like the Chiefs never really seem like they, they're a team with a chip on their shoulder because they're always just good. Like they're just like winners. So it's never like they're angry about it. They don't have anything to be like have a chip about. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're never underdogs. They're never like rooted out. Well, now they kind of are. Now that Mahomes is like little injuries going on, yeah. it, it, people are starting to doubt them. Yeah. So maybe they're using this as the chip. Everyone's in on the Bengals at this point. I mean, how can you not be? They look so good against the Bills. They got the ownage. Mahomes is a little hobbled. Like, I'd love to see an angry Mahomes, like give him, him give a halftime speech. I feel like it'd be uncontrollably funny. Just like Mahomes. Yeah, I don't think out. it would pump me up at all. No, it'd be fun. It'd be yeah. a little distracting yeah. with his like Kermit <laughs> yeah. voice. Just be like, stop. Yeah. yeah. Be good. All right. Well, You're doing uh, the opposite right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take our prize pick squares before we go to our game predictions. All, All right. right, go for it. Oh shit! shit son. Actually, okay, we're gonna have an issue here. Yeah, we are because we're you're gonna fucking have a fucking problem. You're disrespecting my knowledge here. <laughs> I don't know where you're coming from with this fucking square, dude. What do you mean? What's your square? All right, I got Joe Mixon more than three receptions. Uh, he has absolutely crushed this line basically all year. He either crushes it or pushes it. So we either get the three and we push or we go over. When the the Chiefs played the Bengals earlier this year, Mixon was out. And Samaj P. Ryan filled in for him and got six receptions. Six. That's double the line that I'm talking about here for Joe Mixon. Uh, P. Ryan's the GOAT, though. Yeah, it's it's about to be Joe Sixon. Six receptions for Joe Mixon this week. Um, at least four, though. 
Uh, I just really like the uh, the more here. I think uh, Burrow's going to be getting the ball out fast, maybe some quick dump offs, some screens. And uh, you're so hoping for a push with this. You are, dude. It's well, see. It's not that I'm hoping for a push. It's you just, need, I think it, you at need it to worst, push or else it's going to bust. I think at worst you get a push here. Dude, okay, so my square is Samaj P. Ryan over 13 and a half receiving yards. Um, look, I, I think this narrative of the Bengals banged up O-line is going to play more of a factor in this game with not as sh- shitty weather. You also got better pass rushers with Kansas City. Like, the, the Bengals are going to need Samaj P. Ryan in there at very least to pass block. He is significantly a better pass blocker than Joe Mixon. Um, he's in there on more passing downs, more third downs. He's in there on the two-minute drill where you can rack up a lot of catches. Um, just Joe Burrow under a lot of pressure in this shorter, condensed offense. He he is going to be dumping it off a lot. I just don't see how you think P or how you think Mixon is the guy over P Ryan when in these playoffs P Ryan has the higher route rate, gets more targets when he's in there. I don't know, dude. It's just like Mixon's, like you're saying, Mixon, this Mixon's going to come back and get his six that P. Ryan had, but that's just not Mixon's job. That's not Mixon's role. It's, it's been his role all year. Even in this postseason, 38 routes for P. Ryan, 24 for Mixon. Okay, so this Mixon last has- time they played the Chiefs, right, Mixon was out. But in the last AFC game, it was P. Ryan who had three catches on four targets for 43 yards. Mixon had 60 receptions this year, the most in his career. You're going to act like he's not catching balls. He had 75 targets. But like this, this the receiving back is obviously P Ryan in this in this offense. You can how are you going to say that when Mixon's got sixty receptions? Oh, how many, like P, how many does P Ryan have? I don't know. Google it. I don't have P Ryan's fucking it's total. Not, it's not going to be sixty. Either way, P Ryan is their guy on on like any fucking passing down. I, I that's how it feels, and it feels like they want to trust him when it comes to those situations. I think, yeah, I, I, like I said when you first started it, I think you're probably hoping for a push there. Like, four receptions does not seem like a lock whatsoever for Joe Mixon. I like him on the ground. I took his, I do, too. I took his rushing, yard, uh, his rushing yards at 56.5. 38 receptions for Samaj P. Ryan. All right. That makes sense given, like, the very limited time he gets onto the field. But um, I don't know. Based off, like, last game, based off some streaks we've seen with P. Ryan where they just, like, kind of get comfortable with him, I could see him playing a huge third down role. I think P. Ryan gets a lot of run this game. I uh, yeah. I mean, I think Mixon dominates on first and second down. Like I, th- I think at worst this is a very fair <laughs> matchup where like both teams can kind of impose their whatever they want to do. Um, and for Cincy, I feel like they're explosive, right? And they can make big plays with Higgins and Chase and shit. But I think at the core of who they are, like a lot of the times they want to fall back on Mixon and let him carry the ball eighteen to twenty times. I think it's a game where Mixon gets fifteen to twenty carries, and I think that that's an easy turnover to fifty-seven yards. So I'm 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 not usually a guy who goes in on Mixon. He's like never a more type of guy for me. But um, I, I I mean we saw it last game against Buffalo. Like when they got up, they want to lean on this dude. They want to ground and pound it. He looked good. He looked powerful, and I think that's what they're going to try to do against Kansas City. Do we have Mixon's more than three receptions? We got Mixon more than fifty-six and a half rushing yards. You have. P Ryan, P. Ryan, we're we're all in on the, we're only the on Bengals Cincinnati. backfield. So that means yeah. the Chiefs take this fucking with ease. Uh, game predictions. We've got a little bit of a split here. I haven't made mine yet. All right, well, I'll start then. I'm going to go ahead. I hate doing this too. I hate doing this because in my heart of hearts, you know, I, I hate the Chiefs. But I think they're going to somehow find a way to win this game. Chiefs 24 20. I love the under. The under 47 and a half. That's my favorite. Games at night this year, 6 p.m. or later, and this is a 6 o'clock game, are 39-21 and 21 to the under so far this season. The under is 18-3 and three in the last 21 night games, 19-4 and four in night games since December 1st. And the under, here we go, ready for this one, 55-38-1 at Arrowhead Stadium. So uh, Not too bad this is Burrowhead Stadium. Oh, well, yeah. on that motherfucker. Damn, I fucked up. But uh, when the total is below 50 at Arrowhead, the under is 37 and 22. So, like, all these stats I just gave you for the under, if you don't take the under after this, then uh, you're just not sharp. And nothing I could do to help you. Sure. Okay, I'm going to take the over. <laughs> I'm going to take the Bengals to win 28-21. I think they win by that full tug. You hate but overs. You mean unders? Yes. I just told you, like, seven no, stats about the under. Sarcastic. I don't. I don't see the relevance in any of those numbers. But I, I think... It's it's just a random unders eighteen and three in the last twenty one night games. Like what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> Means at night players are tired and they don't play as hard. Last so right. NFC championship game. Right, they're going to be up all night partying and they're going to be tired. Their bedtime's at six p.m. I forgot I mean, about that. What about, about part. the when the, when the total is below fifty at Arrowhead? The unders thirty seven and twenty two. That's sixty two percent. Right. They, these guys don't know how to play in the cold. That's a sixty two percent hit rate at Arrowhead on the under. Just, sure, just but saying. like, is that is that causation or correlation? <gasps> 
I don't know what those even mean. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Here, that's your problem. Look, I think both of these offense are going to find pretty good success. I think both of them are going to be condensed. They're going to be short, like Pat Mahomes with no mobility. Um, he's going to have to dump it off quick. The Bengals have found success against Kansas City because they'll drop eight. And a lot of times when Pat Mahomes has to hold the ball for like more than three seconds, he's just way less successful. Pat Mahone's got to get it out quick. I agree with you. Jarek McKinnon probably should be heavily involved in this game. And the same thing goes with the Bengals, where they've just been doing this for a while now. Condensed, around the line of scrimmage. Chiefs don't really uh, Chiefs don't really cover the middle of the field well. So I think Bengals find success. I think Chiefs find success. And I don't think it's I don't think it's a lot of like deep plays, a lot of fast back and forth, but I think it's both like slow, methodical on both sides. Like like Bengals take a lot of time, go down, score. Chiefs do the same thing, and eventually Bengals just get that extra touchdown at you're, the end. You're describing the under. No, he's me. describing the over in a sliced up, methodical way. Yeah, touchdown, how the touchdown, under lands. Touchdown, 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 right, but touchdown. like these, they're taking their time, they're running the ball, wasting the clock. But they're going to be efficient enough to find the end zone. Not enough. I will break the tie. Twenty-seven to twenty-four. Give me the over, and give me the Joey Burrows. Cincinnati Bengals, 27 to 24. We're going to see a Philadelphia, a Cincinnati Super Bowl under for that game, over for this game. Their team, there's a lot of my heart that just says Chiefs. Like, I'm, I've just been programmed to believe how good they are over the last, like, fucking five years. But this just feels like the Bengals are at a better place right now and they're just a better team so i'm not gonna uh i'm not gonna think too hard about that one it feels like these two forces are coming together and the the chiefs just like slipped up a little one bit right a little before ankle probably yeah one you slipped. slipped up a little before the collision yeah now they're about to get leveled hate to see it one uh one last fun stat i want to mention love it tony and i were talking about this um pat mahomes he's expected to win the nfl mvp the last mvp <laughs> to win a super bowl was kurt warner in 1999 so I just think it's very interesting. We were talking about how it's uh, these MVPs, you know, always on good teams. Well, that's good, good player, but they can't win the Super Bowls. They make it to the Super Bowls, but they don't win it. And we were saying it's because. Okay, you were saying that. that see, that stat makes sense to me. Because yes. normally a lot of times the MVP winner is someone who has to, like, single-handedly carry a team. So they don't have a good team. Right. right. <clears throat> like, it, basically, it'd be like Josh Allen this year where it's like he had a great regular season, but, like, the like the Bills having to play multiple good teams that are stacked everywhere. Like, you just don't win a Super Bowl a lot of times like that. It's so. just crazy. Since 1999, it's been over 20 years since an MVP. And there's been plenty of MVPs in Super Bowls. Cam Newton just did it. Tom Brady's done it. Like, these guys win the MVP, they go to the Super Bowl, and they just don't end, yeah. end up winning. Like, yeah, Tom Brady how does that never happen with Tom Brady? He lost to Nick Foles. Well, because fucking... people look at Tom Brady be like, he has Belichick, he has all this, like, this defense, this whatever. Like, he's not MVP. But he yeah. still was, like, a was he like a six-time yeah, time I agree, MVP? but it's the same reason, like, was Belichick or like, Andy. That's what I mean, like... Fucking seven Super Bowls, six MVPs, and not one of those like collided. Four, yeah, it's that's like, just thirteen unreal seasons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, like that's crazy. Well, it, it. I feel like it's the same thing with like Andy Reid never wins Coach of the Year because it's like, oh, he has Pat Mahomes, but it doesn't matter that he f you finished first in the yeah. end, AFC. But even when he, yeah, exactly. Coaches, I almost feel like that's even more extreme. Like, I feel right. like they they have less incentive to give these great coaches because they just do it every year and they get yeah. Sick of it. It's almost but, like they get their baseline. And it's like we don't care. Like you have to go so far above what we already expect from you in order for you to outplay these like other shitty coaches yeah didn't Mahomes but, win MVP too and then lose right yeah when uh to the Bucks and then Brady won MVP and then lost to the Eagles I, I think the year Mahomes won MVP they didn't even make the Super Bowl Cam Newton won MVP lost to the Broncos Peyton Manning won MVP lost to the Seahawks it's just like crazy how it ha it's like happened a lot over the last 10 years but in 20 years that you can't find an MVP to go to the Super Bowl and win it yeah pretty wild because like J Jalen Hurts could be an MVP this year but they're not going to give it to him because the Eagles are too good of a team which obviously helps you win a Super Bowl, but not an MVP award. Yeah. Yeah. I fair. just thought it was very interesting. 20 years is a long time, so. And there's been plenty of opportunities for it to happen. All right. Um, well, that will wrap up Conference Championship. So make sure you go check out both Mojo and Prize Picks. Mojo's got the liquid games going on. Prize Picks, BDG, don't matter about the caps. 100% deposit match. Both linked in the description. we got a million different ways for you all to play. So play with us. Stay with us. Subscribe to us. Like us. Love us. Set, uh, write your sins in the comment section. <laughs> Confess your crimes. Confess your crimes. Burn!